for that chance agreement uh, within the data. So to calculate kappa in SPSS, go into Analyze, Descriptives, Cross Tabs, and put your rater, raters in row and column. So I'm, I like to put the rater A in column in the columns and rater B in the rows. Doesn't really matter. You could switch it up. Uh, you at the very least have to click on kappa, and that's really all you need in a kappa analysis. But I also like to click cells to show the difference between observed and expected because just like in a 2 by 2 table analysis or, or a 3 by 3 Pearson chi-square contingency table analysis, it's the difference between observed and expected that really is used to uh, help calculate kappa. Let's look at the output and see what I'm talking about. So in this case, uh, with a total sample size of 100, 75 of the patients were rated as uh, psychological by both the rater A and rater B as having a psychological diagnosis. Now, just based on the null hypothesis, by chance you would expect 64 of them based on the parameters associated with our data. 64. So there is an improvement. The raters seem to be agreeing above chance uh, on the psychological uh, condition. And then neurological, the expected uh, under the null hypothesis is 0.5, but they both agreed on 4, both being neurological. But they did have some disagreement. Rater A rated one person as neurological, but Rater B actually rated that person as psychological. All right, and then we've got the final case of organic. They agreed on 10 uh, people having an organic disorder when the null hypothesis would have predicted 1.5. So there's a discrepancy there, and that discrepancy is suggesting that there is some systematic variance. They're agreeing on something beyond chance. And that's when we get, and then Kappa basically estimates that uh, agreement level beyond chance, and it estimates it at 67.6, or 0.676, which, with a standard error of 0.088, and statistical significance P less than 0.001. But what's a take-home message here is that uh, if you would have used this method, you would have said 89% agreement, which is true just looking at it based on what they can agree on with a, the addition of simply chance effect. Now, when you strip away the chance effect, it goes down from 89 down to 67.6% level of agreement, which is statistically significant. Now, there are rules for what is a meaningful and appreciable level of kappa, and uh, basically anything above 0.6 is pretty good. And I think that bears out here. We can see the difference between expected and uh, what they're actually predicting uh, in terms of agreement. Uh, and there's some pretty big discrepancies there, and that does suggest to me that, yeah, they are adding a significant improvement above chance. And, and so it is above 0.6, uh, and there are other levels that I'll, I'll put in the uh, link to the summary that you can check out for some citations to support you saying 0.6 is, is a good level of agreement when you estimate uh, with kappa. So I hope you found this useful, the difference between kappa and just level of agreement. Uh, kappa was very useful that way, and uh, I hope you find it useful yourself, and I'll catch you next time.